What's going on y'all, it's Toxicity here, back with another video. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for this video, but I decided after uh, another YouTuber, Jai, commented, go check him out. He makes really good content, by the way. A lot of people have been asking me to do a step back floater tutorial. You'll see it a little bit in my post slasher video, the post slasher experience. I just recently learned how to do it, and it's actually a lot easier than it might look. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys how to do it in today's video, and I'm also going to teach you a couple other tricks on how you can be a glitchy slasher like me. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a little bit. Now, quick warning, if you look, I already missed a couple. You're going to need to good release these. You're going to miss a lot of these. You're taking them from practically the three-point line, meaning your base is going to be very low. Now make sure, I'm going to go ahead and walk across this line, but make sure you do it around this line. No further than right here. If you go any further and you try and do this, it's going to give you a forward drop step, which may not always be bad, but at least for a slasher, I don't think that's ideal. Now, I'm going to explain how to do this on keyboard and controller, but I'm going to start with controller. So the guy that I was 1v1ing for the demonstration left, so I'm going to go ahead and explain this with takeover on. Hold left trigger to go into the post, move your left joystick forward, hold down right trigger, double tap X, double tap X again. Now, don't let that get mistaken with just tapping X once for the hop step. If you do that, you'll just get a forward hop step. If you double tap, you'll get a backwards hop step. Now for keyboard players, what keyboard players are going to want to do is literally the same thing. Hold G to go into the post. Make sure you're holding W to go forward. Hold Shift, double tap E, double tap E again. It's very easy. It might take some time to get used to. One of the things that I see a lot with this move is people will get the first part right, but then they won't double tap fast enough and it'll send you into an off dribble. If your build can make those, you could use that. That's not a bad move. Most people wouldn't expect that, but you just got to get used to the timing. Now, there's a couple tricks that I want to show you guys, and the first one is going to be the delay floater. The delay floater is very difficult to pull off, but it basically, what it means is when you are attempting a hop step floater, and your character is contorted the wrong direction, your character will turn around and go forward like I just did right there. Now, I didn't do a floater, I did an off dribble. But what that does is it basically lets you run through your opponent and take a floater. And likely, if you get a lightly contested shot, or a very uncontested shot, like right there, it's gonna go in. The main goal is if you actually want to perform this move intentionally, it's gonna take some practice. Even for me, it takes some practice. I notice that my character has to be completely turned around, but even then sometimes when I do it, it gives me that animation. Now the reason that this move is so good is because people will see the bar and immediately assume you're jumping and they'll either fiend for a magnet or they'll try and block. Like right there, that's what I'm talking about. When you run really far back and then you're just able to turn around and phase through another player's body, most of the time they're not going to be able to guard that. If you're doing an acro or an off dribble, sure. When you're doing a floater or a layup, you're just going to be able to go right past them. Right there, that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Now, probably my most famous move that I do is the ability to quickly get a burst of speed. Now, I don't know how many people actually know how to do this. It's, it's pretty difficult on keyboard, I'll say that. It's very difficult on keyboard because when you're pressing your keys, as you see, I'm clicking my keys right now, even though I'm barely pressing them, they respond very well. But if you look at my joystick and I barely flick it, you'll see that my character goes very slow. I can immediately turn that into a burst of speed that nobody would be expecting and get to the rim extremely quickly, or get to my shooting spot extremely quickly. Now the way that you do this is a very slight push of the, joy of the left joystick wherever you want to go, and then you want to hold shift and immediately point the joystick to the direction that you want to go. You can point it in any direction. As you see here, I could be going left, and then I sprint out and I can go right. Now, if you want to go side to side, what I would what I would recommend is that you switch hands. You could do this, switch hands, and then immediately push off, and you have a layup, you'd have an off dribble, anything. It may take some time to get used to. Now, going from forward to back, sometimes you'll get this, where it takes you a second to actually get to full running speed. If you execute it correctly, it should just be like, you just automatically speed up, like your acceleration just immediately starts, just like that. 
Now next up, I want to show you guys how to effectively hop step floater. This is something that used to be so overpowered in the game, but for some reason people just forgot how to do it. Now, stuns on hop step floaters are actually initiated by space creator now, not slithery finisher. Remember, space creator, not slithery finisher. And you can do it without space creator. Personally, I only get bronze space creator on my post slasher. I do not plan on using it. I plan on using slithery. What people don't realize about hop step floaters is it's all about hitting the very corner of the person that's guarding you's body. If you hit that corner, no matter the person that you're guarding, you will get a stun. It doesn't matter if it's a max weight big. It doesn't matter if it's a defender with diamond clamps. It may be slightly more inconsistent in that regard, but if you hit that corner, you're going to get a stun. And the most effective way that I would do this is, remember that little trick that I showed you guys earlier? Where you burst out right here, and then you do a hop step. Easy, easy way to get a stun. It works almost every single time, because people won't expect it. Now, the post hop step floater could be used for post scores or for slashers, but... Obviously, you all know about the post hop step. That's not what I'm talking about. Obviously, most slashers aren't going to have that in their bag. This helps, especially if you have post tech on. If you do not have post tech on, there's really no reason to do this unless you just want a higher chance of a stun. So you're going to go into the post, hold shift, tap X, and then double tap X. It's literally just a hop step floater, but you want to make sure that you're holding left trigger. Now for the more advanced version of this, you can do the same thing that post scores do for fast fades, like this. Except you're going to do that with a floater. So you're going to tap LT. So you're going to, so you're going to hold left trigger. You're going to tap X and then double tap X. Make sure you're sprinting with that as well. You can't initiate a hop step if you're not holding shift. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm still trying to find other slasher techniques. If there's anything that I miss, make sure to let me know. If there's anything that you guys see that I do that I did not add, let me know. And I'll likely drop how to do it in one of my streams. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Y'all can thank Jai for the video suggestion. And that's it. Peace out.